Great. Uh, we're very pleased to have Peng Shan from Xinhua who tell us about Stain Algebras and Pontes Cool Branches. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the invitation. And uh, I'm going to talk about a joint work with Dylan Elgrit, who's a colleague in Xinhua. And the paper is on last uh, month. Yeah. And so uh, maybe this one word about the physics background. I'm not a physicist. <laughs> uh, so uh, so in the so-called class S theory, which is a, a 60, which is a 40 theory, but if we start from a 60 to power zero super low flow field theory, uh, uh, our one has a Riemann surface S, and then um, so this gives a, well, since we can compactify on the surface, this gives a 4D theory. Uh, and then, let's write it as this. Uh, and then by work of, uh, well, by Gayoto, Moore, and Nunch. So physicists uh, predict that this should be um, the Coulomb branch of this theory, so uh, this this forty theory um, should be should be a, a character variety of, of S. So so they say, uh, or like actually more precisely, when it uh, compactified this this forty uh, theory on a circle, yeah, maybe I should say uh, compactified. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, S1 in this, this direction. Uh, this gives you the equation of the branch and is supposed to be the, the character variety for S. And then uh, recently, uh, Braverman, think of the Character to, to, to some group, there is a, there you start. There was some some initial uh, data you started in the theory, and then there is some some group uh, who which will appear here. Uh, and then Kajima. So they proposed a mathematical definition for this space. So so they give a uh, which I will recall later. So they they give a mathematical definition. For um for this n c three d and so now uh, this side is a mathematical mathematical defined object and, and you also have a math definition for this and you can ask are they really the same so this is what you're so trying to say uh, so the definition for the back um, it's the yeah the character variety is an object that's which is well defined, right? that's, that's well defined yeah. this physicists have an idea about this but we didn't and they say they're the same thing. But now we have a definition in mathematical terms, and you want to know whether they are the same. And so, uh, so the goal of this talk is to show for the limit. For now, we do uh, just a group G equals to SL two. Um, so we sh we establish some rigorous relation between, uh, mm -hmm. like, or yeah. Between uh, character varieties and so and 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 this uh, and and BSN could branch. <laughs> okay, so maybe let me first remind you about the definition. So let's start with the character variety. So we fix uh, S to be a compact. Oriented surface. So sometimes I will write uh, S equals to. So we only care about the actually the quality of the surface and and uh, S G N. This means there's a surface of genus M, a uh, genus G, and then 
that has n punctures. And then uh, the character variety for SL2. So uh, I, I would just uh, fix ones for our my group as SL2 and then I'll try it. And then the character variety is um, just uh, all the homomorphisms from pi one of S to SL2 modulo S to SL2 conjugation. So mm -hmm. applying variety and whose close points can be characterized in this way. And then uh, we can think about the regular functions on this space. It is known that they're generated as follows. So this space is generated by the following. Um, so for any closed curve, mm -hmm. so for any gamma, which is a um, yeah, which is a, a homotopy class. Um, uh, a circle in, in S. And then you just uh, you just take, uh, so it gives you an element in the pi one, and then you, uh, so you take its image and the row, and then take its trace, it gives you a number. And, and so this gives you a function um, on the, so, on, on character variety whose value at row is just, you take the trace of row of down. Okay. And then such functions generate this, this range. Or for all the down. <laughs> okay. And then uh, when we have punctures, we can consider a relative version. That is, you can fix the monodromy, uh, well, the conjugacy class of monodromy is around the punctures. And so, um, so suppose that I have a surface uh, with some punctures there, and then I will fix some little loops around each of these punctures, say gamma one, and then gamma two. And then, so I want to fix. Um, the monodromy around these curves. So I would just pick uh, as much as uh, complex numbers uh, on the punctures. So I, uh, so yeah, so let's say uh, pick for lambda equals to lambda one, lambda n, where n is the number of punctures, we can consider the character variety, the relative version of character variety. Mm -hmm. Which uh, is you a closed subvariety here, and what you require um, modulo modulo conjugation, and what you require is that uh, row of each of the gamma i is conjugate to the element lambda i lambda i inverse in S I two. Okay, and then it's easy to describe this, the functions of this relative version, so it's a closed subscheme. So it's just the uh, functions on character of S, and then you quotient out by the relation that for your fixed gamma i, the trace function is equal to lambda i plus lambda i. Okay, so, so this is basically what I will need about character variety. And then, uh, the, so there's the scan I do in the title, it occurs as quantization of these varieties. And so, uh, more precisely, what we use is called Hoffman brackets. Scan algebra. 
So it is defined as follows. So we fix, um, so denoted by scan A S, uh, where A is a parameter, so it's a formal parameter. So this is a space minus one algebra, which uh, in the character right. Um, so it's defined just roughly as follows. So you first uh, define a space which I'll call LAS. This is the space of C of A S minus one module, which is freely generated by the link uh, by uh, isotopic calculation. of links in uh, the three-dimensional manifold S plus zero one. So S cross the, the interval zero one. So uh, everyone knows what the link is? Uh, <laughs> well, link is just an orient unoriented uh, one-dimensional manifold inside here. And then, uh, and then you can give your link some framing, which is just give a give a, uh, a vector field on your link, such that at each point is not uh, tangent to your link. Okay, so you have a three dimensional manifold, you have a one di one dimensional sub manifold in it, and then you fix a vector field on the link. Uh, it's just give a framing for this for this link, and then up to some you imagine, we just imagine. Our blackboard is a surface where you consider it a little bit, make it like a more interesting surface. And then you have S cross zero one, you have links inside. And then you can always, after isotopy, assume your, your framing is pointing towards this direction, let's say. So this is called a blackboard framing. And, and, and so we, yeah, so we will, and then we'll always be looking at uh, isotopic class, classes of links, of frame links, and then we, we take this uh, a representative with the, this black, blackboard framing. So this defines this space. Is there any question? Are there any questions? So it's, it's, it's isotopic class of frame links. Of frame links. Of frame links. Yes, and then um, and then you can so put it's them. Just, it's, it's just, I mean, this is the definition. It's generated yes. by the isotopic classes of link. So you consider a space spent by this, and then we give an algebra structure here, oh, which is just by stacking the zero one direction. So you have you have your surface, and you have this zero one interval, mm -hmm. and you can you can. You can stack them along this direction and just take unions of the links inside the the, the union. So that's multiplication. That's multiplication on this on this space, and it is C of a plus minus one linear. Okay, so this gives this space an algebra structure, but we're not done yet. Um, and so, in particular, we have frame link. You can present it on the board just by by. Uh, by drawing its, its projection. So, okay, so you, uh, because you have a framing, you can distinguish which, which curve is on top of the other. And up to isotopy, when you twist a little bit, you can assume that there's no three points projecting to the same point on the board. And so you can, you can draw it in a way like this. Okay. All right, uh, but we're not done yet. So the scanning algebra is the portion of this algebra. Now we have this. Now we have the algebra structure here by the following relations. So, um, so the relation is as follows: the in in my link somewhere locally, uh, I have a crossing. So, so we, if we look here, we just look at this part. So um, 
So here I have something like, like this. So it's one brain goes on top of the other. Then we can replace it by A times this thing. Plus A inverse times times this one. Okay. So you can resolve your links in this way. So this means you, you just replace locally this picture by these two by adding the corresponding coefficients and keeping the rest uh, unchanged. And, and if you see a, see a circle like this, so you can evaluate it. So this is like minus a squared plus a minus two, uh, and then you remove this circle. Okay. And the scan algebra is the quotient of this uh, freely generated space by, by these relations. All right. And then, well, there's this fact I'm not going to prove, which tells you that if you specialize your scan algebra at parameter equals to one, you will get uh, the you will get the functions on the character right. One thing is some Q deformation. Yes, yeah. A is the Q. I save the Q for other <laughs> other things. <laughs> so so uh, and, and and moreover, if you have a link L project, so this gives you a class here. If you, it's projecting. To uh, to gamma, then uh, this will map to the trace of of gamma before, and also uh, yeah. All right, and then you have a relative version. Okay. Huh. Is this game thing? No, it's not coming in. No, it's not, no, it's not uh, community because we do when you're stacking. It depends on the on which one's on top of the other. So yeah, it doesn't. So uh, relative. Um. So now you can you know, imagine. So as a, as lambda is before, and this is the quotient of the scan algebra by um, a relation that if you have a puncture and in the and you have you have uh, a link go around your puncture. If it, well, if in your link locally you have something like this. You uh you replace this by a uh, minus lambda or just lambda i plus lambda i minus. Is that a minus? Okay. Yeah. Uh, times uh the the m. Okay. So it's according to the same same principle here. All right. Now, of course, when you specialize a equals to one, then it's supposed to functions on um, the relative. All right. Are there any questions? I'm going to Coulomb branch, if not. <laughs> All right, so quantized uh, major relative Coulomb branch. <laughs> Oh, um, the definition is as follows. So let's fix K to be the field of Lorentz Haar series, and then we fix O to be the integer inside here. And then um, we take G to be okay. Forgot, forgot. I I said G equals to SL two. Okay, now G will be something else. 
I'm sorry, but before all like all this was for SO2, now G will be some other group. But your early definition looks like SO2, you can do for anything. This you can, well, Earlier, uh, the character right, you can define for any group the same way. Uh, if you want scan algebra, it's more tricky. Oh, this, because we say inverse. Yeah, this, no, this relation is really for SO2. So, uh, yeah, there's some backgrounds why this relation be considered representing of SO2, but let's not go there. Uh, so uh, so then for any redemption for the chain. But that is a favorite. Just have to modify that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure. Are they always a presentation on this? Maybe the thing is what even. Yeah, I think if you present the representation <laughs> ring, then you've got a presentation. I mean, you've right. got generators for representation right. relations and tensor from the group. Right. So it's a more well, complicated relation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I take G to the uh, connected reductive group. Um, Although I don't know the intuition of the uh, resolve your understand. Yeah, this comes from uh, the representation of SO2. Yeah. Uh, some. Oh, anyway. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. And and then uh, I'll consider the Ethan Grassmannian for this group. So, um, this those points are the same, just head over to And then, uh, so BFN, what they did is the following. So they tell you that starting from any uh, reductive group like this, and then N is a representation for G of uh, the representation. You can define the following space. So you can first, well, when you have this, you have G of K acts on N of K, right? And then inside you have a subspace N of O, which is stabilized by G of O. And you can induce this. So you can take GK cross N O over G of O. And then you have a natural map of this to nk just by action. So, so you have g and n, and then you just you just let the element g acting on n uh, this vectorize through this quotient, and then and then it gives you a map like this. So this space that's denoted by t, that's their notation. And then they they consider a subspace which is called R, this, uh, which is defined as the inverse image of the animal. Okay. In other words, you're looking at uh, all the points P and G K all right, and this space is labeled under uh, left action by GO because if you multiply something on the left, it stays in GO, and then um, and and so you can consider uh, so what they consider is the GO equivalent K theory. For this space R. And uh, this is the so called the BFN algebra. It's denoted by A. Maybe, yeah, I'll just denote by A. So, um, so this thing morally is the same as uh, if we can make sense of G of K equivalence, that would be the GK equivalence of. The uh, fiber product of P over NK. The, the reason you can write it like this is just this is an induced variety. So we can write it this way. And and but it's more transparent here that you have a convolution product when you do spaces like this. And, and, and you can translate them here so you, you so you get a convolution product on this space. 
Um, the point here is, uh, as in the case, well, if people are familiar with the usual Grassmannian, a fun Grassmannian case, what is particular in this situation is that this convolution product is actually commutative. So a, any um, equipped with convolution is a commutative algebra. And then uh, what is called the Coulomb branch is the spectrum of this algebra. So, so BFN Coulomb branch is by definition the just the fact of, of this algebra. Uh, A. All right. But this construction comes with several several properties. So first of all, you have a natural quantization of this ring A. So uh, first A has a natural compensation. Just because um on this space R you have uh, you can turn on loop rotation. So 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 here you have C star action on K just by multiplying the Z variable. And it gives you a C star action on the F and Grassmannian and all, all the all the following constructions. And so you have um so you have C star by action by localization from R, and therefore you can consider the equivalent, not only GO equivalent, but uh equivalent with this additional C star action. K of this space R. <laughs> and in this case, it still has a convolution product, but it's no more commutative. And so it's, so this algebra will be called a Q, where Q is the parameter uh, standing for the equivariant, uh, C star equivariant, K theory of the quant. And so this this content, uh, when when you put q equals to one, you recover one before this content. Okay. Uh, so this is one thing. Second thing is that um, this form branch sometimes have natural deformation coming from so called a uh, flavor symmetry. Um, which is the following situation. So assume you have an additional group. Which acts on N and commute with G. Then uh, you can, uh, and then the F will continue to act on this space R, and so you can add the F equivalence in your K theory. So, so we can define A to the F just to uh, do everything as before, but but together with this F equivalence on this space R. And then this this deform. So what is F? I mean, F is F is some group. Okay. It's some group. Uh, it, it will be reductive, but yeah, it's it's reductive, but and it's a representation of F and action of F and G commute. So it commutes with G. Yeah. So this is a deformation. Of a over just uh at the k theory of f equivalent k theory of the point. Later we'll take f to be a torus. So this is like the characterizing of the of the torus. All right. Um. Okay. So the data is the representation g of g. Yeah. And, uh, some the initial data is just a representation of G. Right, but then later add something called F. Yeah, F is a so, so called flavor symmetry. It's like a. Uh, so the alpha morph. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I, I will give you examples later on. And then, uh, ready. Okay. Uh, and, and finally, so, um, so you notice that if you add contains a community sub algebra, which is just uh, the G equivalent K theory of, of the point. And so, yeah, I don't know if I should talk about this, but this is kind of important for the Coulomb branch. Um, not really important later on. So, so this is like functions um, on the maximal powers of T of G modulo the well grid function. And then uh, you can show that, so so you view AQ, uh, AQ as an, or AQF as an, as an algebra over this, and, and then you can, so then you can view this as a, as a, as a sheaf over T over W. And then you can look at the generic fiber. In fact, by localization theorem, when you look at the generic fiber, it's like taking T fixed points on this space and yeah, up to some detail, uh, it's like taking the K theory of the upper grass of the torus. So um, all the sentences just to tell you that this space MC is directionally equivalent to uh, T plus T dual over W. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, independent, independent. Yeah, the N, generic. you generically, you will not see it. All right, and finally, uh, this this algebra, as usual, usually for convolution algebra, it comes, it has a faithful polynomial representation. It's by acting on... Um, G equivalent, G O plus system plus F equivalent formality of the point. So this, yeah, I mean, without going to details, but, mm -hmm. but I just want to make the point that you have a you have a you have a representation which comes by just natural action of convolution algebra, and and then uh, it, it, this is a very explicit polynomial ring. And and it's a faithful representation for for this type. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now, so we have I introduced all the objects I need, and now we want to relate the scan algebra or the character variety to this Coulomb branch, which a priori looks very different. Um, so the first question you want to ask is: given the surface. You want to produce a Coulomb branch, so which G and which N you want. That's the initial data you need to produce of an object. And so, um, so we assume somehow that we need to make some assumption on our surface. We assume, assume its order characteristic is negative. So this is two minus two G minus N, and we assume this is negative. And then, um, the construction I'm going to give this is mm -hmm. this is uh, inspired by the old paper of the new part on the energy. So what we're going to do is that you have a sort you have a surface with some functions. Let me draw something like this. And then I'll fix I'll fix a times decomposition. Of, of the surface S. That means I will pick a couple of closed curves on on my on my surface and cut cut it into pens. Okay. So for example, I, I, I take a decomposition like this here. And so I will denote 
uh, I, I would denote this family of curves that, that it used to cut it into tensile composition by gamma. So, so this is the equal curves as uh, used to uh, cut it into tensile composition. And then I will denote by B. B. B is the B is a set of loops around each boundary component. So, uh, so around each boundary component, I have a, I, I will fix a, a simple curve. So this is uh, loops around boundary components. Okay, and now I let G, so G is the group that we use for the Coulomb branch, just be the product. For each copy of gamma here, I will type in SL2. G gamma and G gamma is SL2. And then for each of the loop here, this will be responsible for my for my flavor symmetry group. So I would let F be a product for each uh, eta here. I will touch an F eta where F eta is the diagonal torus in in um, in SL two. So this is my G and my F. And then I need to produce you the vector space. So, so I will not produce you N right away. I will first produce you a vector space M, which is supposed to be N plus N U in the case when it is. But so, so for each pair of pens. Let's say PI. Let's draw it like this. Um, we will set. So so then it has three. Uh, so like these three are like they can be elements. You have loops here. It can be elements in B or or in gamma. Okay. So yeah, let's call it gamma I one gamma I two and gamma I three. Um. So I would just uh, take NPI to be the product of three copies of C2. And then uh, I will let the corresponding group act on it. So if I have a G gamma, if like in for my G, if my G gamma appears in one of this, it would just act on the corresponding C2. Uh, otherwise it don't act, it don't act. And for F as well, I, I view it as a subgroup of SL2. So I consider the corresponding copy of SL2 acting on it. Okay, so this this means if I put my M to be the sum of all the pairs of pens appeared in my decomposition, I put them all together, I get a vector space with commuting action of G and F. Okay. okay. So the, so M is, uh, yeah. So uh, M, M, you can, because SL2 is the same as SP2, you can naturally view it as a symplectic representation. So this is nice. Do you have a bigger book, F, S, and you don't only use diagonal torus? Yeah, for a reason, I will explain later. A priori here, you can, you can add an SL2 action, no problem. But, uh, so this is a symplectic representation. And actually, for physicists, they when they say Coulomb branch, they start from G and the symplectic representation of G. 
But uh, with BFN's definition, it only realizes the case when this M is a, of cotangent type. That means it is it is the N, the vector space M plus its dual. Okay. So, um, so. The same yeah. as in Chen Wang's talk, where we like, need a big representation, right? It's not that. Ah, I see. I'm only is this a normally free? <laughs> I'm happy to if there's a connection with a talk in the morning. <laughs> but I don't know. But... Students want to know. Students want to know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but but in, in any case, so if one day one can. Yeah, uh, okay, maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe let me first say. So M is of cotangent time. If uh if if it is if if it's like like this as a G plus F representation. Okay. And so the proposal we want to give is that when it is of content in time, well, yeah, mm -hmm. like following Skyoto's idea. So the proposal one to give is, is that when M is of both and have then um, the scanning algebra with this quantization parameter is uh, or even let's say with and, and, and with the relative uh, version lambda is isomorphic to uh, AQF um, G M. Mm -hmm. I, I would say it a bit more precisely later on, but this is the this is the idea. Okay, and so maybe one remark. Uh, so so yeah, remark number one is BFN they. They consider the homology version. Like instead of taking integral k, they're thinking uh, more and more homology. And in that situation, there are works um, by by Walter, which I forgot <laughs> the precise names. They have introduced the the Coulomb branch for 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 the when m is not necessarily of cotangent type. But that uses something in perverse sheaves, which is not really available currently for K theory. Or I hope someone could make that available, I don't know. <laughs> but but the idea is when, so for, for K theory, for now we don't have a definition when it's not of cotangent type, but we would hope if one day such a definition is in place, then- uh, which, which set has no definition? Huh? Which set, the left or right hand side? Right hand side, this one, yes. So, so for BFN, I have to use this space N, which is a half of the N. Yes. You need to version of the paper. Right, so square root. Yeah, yeah, okay, maybe I don't need to write this. All right, let me give you some examples. Oh, sorry. Is there a version of the proposal? Mm -hmm. or no, well, like we don't. I mean, you can consider perhaps added. Oh, actually, yes. So you well, you can consider in some situation additive version of character running when it makes it, well it, in the situation where you can describe character variety as a multiplicative quiver variety. Sometimes you have an additive analog, and then uh, and then it should, should correspond to the homo for a more homology version. But, yeah. There's only some version where the, the Riemann surface kind of shrinks to the parameters. So. Well, I was going to, I mean, K-theory has a filtration coming from powers of the bot class. I mean, I know you're only looking at K0. Yes. But, like, nevertheless, mm -hmm. if you take the full graded K star, uh -huh. this has a filtration coming from powers of the bot class. And the associated graded of that is the ordinary one. Uh -huh. And we're wondering how you could see that on the sky. So it's game decided. Like in this description, I don't know. 
I can only say in the case where there exists a description in terms of quiver, right? Okay. Then so, yeah, so in other words, right hand side has some filtration. Yeah. Left hand side, there's, there's, no, no, there's, there's no visible filtration. Yeah. Okay, well, let's look at some examples. So first of all, uh, like easy example is just it acts as just a, a pair of things. So it has three functors. And then in this case, my G is G is one, right? Because I don't need anything to cut it. So my group G is just identity. And then uh, F, I have three functors. So F is three copy of C star. And my uh, M is just, uh, so M is uh, C2 tensor C2 tensor C2. But for this representation, you notice if you consider C star, not the SL2, it is of cotangent type. Oh, because of the icing. Yes, so but if you take yeah, if you take the three copy of SL two, it's symplectic, but it's not of cotangent type. So, so, uh, so then I can write it. I can just pick one one of the copy right as the T star of C. And so, uh, for example, I I view the first copy of T star of C. And then I have my phase N. So in this example, you only have a bound on the boundary. Yeah, I yeah, I only have boundaries. My my group G is trivial. And and so N is a four-dimensional vector space. And then since my G is trivial, my RGN is also a vector space. So it's just N of O. And so, and therefore, if you consider its K theory, it's basically just a polynomial ring. So, um, in this case, K G. Well, let's do that with the C star of F of R G N is just a uh, C star plus F equivalent K theory of the point. And so this. This is just a four copy of C star. So because F is a torus, so I have C of Q plus minus one, the Q for C star, and then I have three variables for the C star, for the three copies of C stars in, in F. Okay. And in this case, every, uh, every simple curve in S is homotopy to one of the, the ones on the boundary. And so the scale algebra is also a polynomial ring, just generated by by those ones on the boundary. So um, so uh, so the scale A S in this case is just you take the uh, so my coefficient ring is A and then my lambda one lambda two and lambda three. These are the uh, variables I fixed at the beginning, and then the generator is those, let's say, eta, eta 1, eta 2, eta 3 uh, around these functions. But then I evaluated the etas uh, at the lambda i plus lambda i inverse. So at the end, I just get this ring, and, and the two are isomorphic. So this is the starting example. The less non trivial example, if we consider a four functor sphere, then so in this case, also uh, both algebra can be computed. So I can I can cut I can cut it like this, and then I have two pairs of hands. And so then if we say this is delta one four, and then here I have uh, I have theta in my in my set gamma here, 
And so my G will be G beta will just be a copy of SO2. And then F will be four copies of C star. And um, again, my, my uh, M will be, you know, like a direct sum of two eight dimensional representations. But in this case, since um, it's for the same reason as before, at, at, at least, in fact, as long as in each pair of plans you have one boundary component, it, then it is of cotangent type. So, uh, so in this case, it is M is is of cotangent type, mm. and the N is just you can think of it as um. The C, so yeah, so you can think of it as representation of this quiver. So you have a, a dimension two, so okay, you have a dimension two framing vector here uh, pointing to, uh, to a dimension two uh, gauge nodes, and then you have a framing vector here. So this is for the, the quiver representation just home from this C2 to this C2. And time direct sum with home from this C2 to this C2. <laughs> and then this two is where you have this SL2 action. And these are you have like these two uh C star action and these two C star. Okay. And then um and then on the other hand side, in this case, the scan algebra can be computed explicitly. So you can really write down the generator relations in this case, which I will not do for you, but just, um, and then the theorem we proved is that in this case, the scan algebra of S04 is isomorphic to uh, this program for this thing. And I want to remark actually in this case, uh, so this algebra it was known by work of Samuelson and maybe somewhere else. Yes, so uh, so so this this algebra was computed by Bula. Um, so they computed the generator relation, and then Breath and Thompson proved that this is isomorphic to the spherical double contact algebra of the so called uh, C1 tag C1 type. And and then actually we what we checked is that this is isomorphic to the to the full branch, and this uh yeah and then Nakajima told us with the in the work with Finkelberg they also observed uh such an isomorphism between full branch and the Daha C one checks one, but yeah but anyways so this is this is this example. But, but yeah. those algebra must have a lot of algebra. You say this isomorphism does exist one or ah, plurality of yeah. So so what we do we have a precise one uh -huh. and, and and what we do is actually we um you have polynomial representations for this for this algebra and then you also have polynomial representation in this case for the scan algebra and then we can fix uh so so this in this case this is generated. By beta alpha and and the other root, which uh, going like this, and we have we have precisely where their image goes to. It's kind of important for later, but but you're right. So, but uh, yeah, I was, maybe I'll say it later. Like none of this is very canonical because first of all, the Pansy decomposition is not right. very canonical. <laughs> yes. Um. And I have another example, which is the one from Kerkoros.
And this example again, I can fix gamma just to be, I can cut it like this, like gamma. And again, my G is equal to SL2. And then now I have only one C star and it's the C star along this, uh, this boundary delta. And then the representation, so, uh, yeah, so, so M is M plus M2, where, where again, M, I, I pick one copy of C here. So I have C delta. And now notice that this part appears twice as the boundary. And actually, when you look at the representation, you think of it as C2 gamma times C2 gamma inverse. And this is the adjoint representation. This is like a, you know C two tensor C two dual for SL two. So, so we have a copy of this. Yeah, let's say this adjoint action of SL two. Okay, and so in terms of quiver, this is the same as representation of just this quiver, but I'm taking SO2 here, and then with the with the arrow adjoining to, to itself. Okay. And the C star action is just acting on, on this on this loop. Okay. And then in this case, so what my proposal needs to be but just to play, but just a little bit, because in this case, what we say is the scan algebra for this this one uh, for torus um, is not almost isomorphic to the cooling branch here, but not quite, as because I need to take a Z two invariant here. The Z the Z two action, what it does is that. On the on the torus, so here, um, yeah, okay. So on, on this torus, I have uh, I have alpha, I have theta, and then I have I have gamma, and then this Z two action it will preserve alpha but flip along the beta side. So Z two sends uh, Z two action by sending alpha to alpha, beta to minus beta, and sum up to minus gamma. But this looks weird that actually uh, it's compatible with what physicists uh, predict. I don't know how they predict this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it is compatible. Um, all right, and then from here, I want to propose a conjecture which you know, like we tried to prove, but haven't really achieved yet, so it's the conjecture. Uh, the conjecture is the following. So uh, we can you know, observe that if your surface, if uh, your surface, uh, so the idea is basically um, for gene of zero and one, your M is always of cotangent type. And so, and so this can make sense. You can formulate things precisely. So uh, for a genus zero case, let's say n bigger than four, then uh, I can cut my surface as follows. So assume I have these all these punctures, and then I can always put put four on the side and have things in the middle, and then I would just cut. I'll just uh, uh, cut like this. And then I will have a linear quiver. So I will have one gauge nodes for each of each of these. And then on the boundary, I will have a ring vertices. So uh, so my my so this will be uh, my quiver is called zero and quiver. And my my a uh, gauge group will just be the product of these gauge nodes. So GL, uh, no, sorry, SL. It's important that we take SL. 
uh, uh, SL2 for each of the, the things, uh, the gauge nodes. And then mm -hmm. the F will be, so I have the C stars for, for these two and these two, I have four C stars. And then I also need to add the C stars acting on the edges. So that is uh, C star on the, on the address. So, okay, yeah, maybe I'm for this. This is one, two, 10 minus three. And then I have uh, in my three copy of this. And then for each I two, I put one between uh, I have a I have a copy of C star. And then uh what we want to say is that the in this case the scanning algebra is isomorphic to fuller branch for this data. And then if you have a genus one surface. Um And you have n functions, so and you just have it. Like this. And, and then you will have a cyclic quiver. And again, you have uh, the F is the one, those ones acting on the edge. Okay, so yeah, I mean, let's write it again. So, and then what we say is the scan algebra for this surface. Um, and again, and uh, like invariant by E2, which is kind of the similar Z2 action as before, you just added some functors on your on your targets. You do the same shit as before. This is isomorphic to the full branch associated to this, this data in this quiver. And so um what we can show is the following. So the, the problem for us to proving this conjecture for the moment is that um you, it is not known how these algebras are generated. It's a complicated problem. And, um, but, but on the other hand side, we do have, uh, so, so for Coulomb branch, you sort of can reduce to SO2 and you have polynomial representations for them. And what you can see that is that the isomorphism we re we've written down for each, each four functor sphere, they are compatible in the polynomial representation um, in this quiver representation. Like you can glue them together in a compatible way. That does make sense. But the problem is that those doesn't generate the entire scanning algebra. So um, we have some trouble there to, to prove this conjectures, but okay. I, I'm five minutes past, so I need to stop. Thanks.